Give to the World Ministries welcomes you to another teaching by Ralphina Dotson. Ralphina Dotson is well qualified to share the message you're about to hear as she lives the principles she teaches daily. As you listen, we trust this message will encourage you, help you grow and develop into maturity as a believer in the kingdom of God. The word you don't know is the word that cannot help you, and the word that doesn't take root can never bring a harvest. Let this message take root in the ground of your heart as you listen to it over and over and take notes. Receive this message. Receive your harvest. Hi, it's Ralphina. How are you doing today? How are you? I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm so delighted that we get to spend this time together. I'm so delighted that the Lord has given us and blessed us with the opportunity to gather in one accord to, to study his word and to become enlightened and encouraged and inspired and deployed. God needs us to get up and do something for him. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm doing this event called The Great Shout, and in my searching for the word that to inspire me and strengthen me for this year, the Lord took me to this place in the book of um, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. I want you to turn in your, in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians, and um, I want, to, want you to just listen to this because it's, it's just such a, a, a need for us to be thinking. I wrote this um, beginning to uh, the inspiration for uh, the advertisement and the vision for this year. And I wrote from the, from the 21st century church. That's us. We seldom hear messages that are preparation for positioning ourselves for the return of our Lord. The Bible says he's coming back. That's what the Bible says. He's coming back. The Bible says he's coming back. He said, I will return. I'm coming back. He says, we ourselves, uh, uh, the Bible describes our condition, the place where we are. We are in a place where we look like the word to be true. God called, the Bible calls it, the beginnings of sorrows. Oh, Miss Rafina, don't say that. Oh, yes. Can't you see it? Isn't it obvious to you? How are you not aware that God has allowed things to deteriorate to a point where we'll just open ourselves up? The majority of the people on the earth, God wants those people to receive him so that they can be retrieved and saved for these, uh, from this eternal damnation that's obviously coming. Oh, listen to this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. Um, um, let's start at verse 2. It says, For yourselves know perfectly. This is the amplified version. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the return of the Lord is coming, just as a thief comes unexpectedly and suddenly in the night. There's a scripture over in the book of Revelation chapter 3 that says, if you do not watch, he'll come like a thief in the night. We are supposed to be watching and praying, preparing ourselves. It says, while they are saying, peace and safety, and after the pandemic and all that, you know, uh, oh, it's all over with. We can go back to partying. We can go back to happy hour. We can go back to the strip club. We can go back to do this. We can go back to do that. We can go back. We can go back. No, it says when, when they are saying peace and safety, all is well and secure, then in a moment unforeseen, destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains on a woman with child and they will absolutely not escape, for there will be no way to escape the judgment of the Lord. That's what it says. There's not going to be a way to escape then. If you're here with the mentality that the world has, the society has, the culture has, it's, it's a wrap for them, unless they make an adjustment beforehand. It says, but you believers, all you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge him as God's son, you are in spiritual darkness. You 
are in spiritual darkness. No, you're not. You are not in spiritual darkness. The people of God, we're not in darkness. We can see. You know, darkness is a place where there's no ability to determine where you are. We can see. I have a, 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 I have a bedroom at night when the blinds are closed and the, uh, the doors are all shut and I turn off the light. I can't see my hand in front of my face. So I have to almost know from where my bed is to the bathroom. I got to know that. Because if not, I'm going to stub toes and break noses and do everything trying to get there. But you see, even in the midst of this dark hour we live in, we are not in the darkness. It says, uh, believers, all of you who believe in Christ the Savior and acknowledge him as God's son, you are not in spiritual darkness. Spiritual darkness means being aware of the atmosphere of God, the presence of God, the fact that he, we were created, the fact that he made us, the fact that he has a, a plan for us. We're here on assignment. We are creatures that came from heaven. I remember I had a dream years ago where I could see this long, 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 long line. And all these people were in this line and this was the line that you stepped across, and there were like little cow rails to keep the cows from getting out of the pen. There was this kind of little rail-like things, but they were like bright, shiny rods. And you stepped out of the supernatural realm and crossed over those rods and entered the natural realm, and you, a spirit being, entered the body of a baby that was assigned to you. I want you to get that image. In line, in heaven, heavenly realm, beings, coming out of the heavenly realm and coming into the physical, the natural realm. And I remember standing there waiting for the, I don't know what it was, a sound, a buzz, a tap, a ring, a bing, I don't know. But I saw myself crossing over those lighted rail-like things and stepping into the body of a baby. And the Lord allowed me to be born and come into a household and a family and a circumstance that was designed to develop me into what he needed me to be. And we've got so many people that when they come across that portal and the thing doesn't work the way they want or they, they see themselves as unable to endure, too weak to survive, too, too angry, too... All the troubles we have, we need them so that they develop us and, and fix us up so we get pushed up on this side and we get pushed down on that side and we get birds cut off of us and all the things the enemy tried to do to us to steal us from God's service, work, and place of being. We need the stuff that's happened. Oh, the devil give you all kind of ways to get escape. You don't need this. You can be, oh, you can, you can get high and ignore it. You can get drunk. Oh, look at this. You can have some sex over here. You can do this over there. And I mean, the people falling by the wayside. But there are some that's come straight through. And I'm here to tell you, if you just decide, let the stuff that's come sent to you, the ideas sent to you, sent to you, ideas sent to you. Ah. I can't even tell you all the ideas I've had to fight off. All the impulses, all the desires, all the, the tastes, all the thinkings that I've had to say no, 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 no. And, 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 and over the years, you know, I, when I first started being doing it, I, I had people laugh and say, oh, she's, some, she's, some, she's scared. She's the, yep, I sure was. Because I kind of saw that thing. That place that I walked over, and I saw the, the things. Uh, what is, uh, I don't know whether it was um, a movie or what, but we saw a man, uh, an Orient, Oriental man, an Asian man, going through a test to become a dom. And uh, he was put at the end of a, a tube, and... Um, he was supposed to come through this tube, and I don't know how long it was. And he was he had developed all his skills and his different strikes and positions. And, and, but he had to come through this tube. And when he started in the tube, 
there'd be people all around the outside of the tube beating on the tube and and the tube wasn't wasn't hard it was like a uh, mesh or something and the people were kicking him and hitting him and beating him and screaming at him and screaming at him and he had to work his way from that entrance of the tube all the way through to all the people beating and kicking and cursing and screaming and screaming and kicking and beating all the way to the end. And when he got to the end of the tube and fell out, it was like, oh, my God, I'm finally here, you know. And he was given his credentials. He was given his credentials. He became a Don. He became someone who had gone through the stages of temptation and trial and misery, and he endured it all and came to the end. So he became a master. They say black belts and uh, all different kinds. Of, but the point of the deal is, is that he endured the trouble and went through the problem and came out a better person with the credentials and the, the, uh, the vindication and the validation. And that's what we have to do. We have to figure out how to do this. It says that we would not be affected by darkness, of spiritual darkness, nor held by its power. And see, that man fell down two or three times, and boy, it beat him, and he was struggling to get back up. Oh, but held by its power, the darkness power, and the day of judgment would overtake you by surprise like a thief. There'll just be a moment when all of a sudden you'll have to come through. You don't. There's no other way. You can't go back. So for those of you who want to take an easy way out and get high and get laid and steal some money and all the stuff it seems like is the best way, trust me, it's not. For all are sons of light. Who? You. It says, for you, all are. We are all sons of light. The people that refuse to accept the light and refuse to obey God and refuse to acknowledge him, well, then they, they, they disqualify themselves. It had nothing to do with God. Some people haven't never heard the word. You say, Lord, what about the little man up in the mountains in Tibet? He never heard the word. I guarantee you there'll be a moment in time when the judgment of the quality of his life will come before the Lord. And he will make it clear that his, the man's character and the way he handled his life will determine where he ends up. But for those who hear the word over and over and over and hear the things over and over and over and refuse them, hmm. for we all are sons of light and sons of day. We do not belong to the night nor to the darkness. I decree and declare I don't belong to the darkness. I don't belong to the light. Nor, so then let us not sleep in spiritual indifference. We are spirit beings. We live in a body and we have a soul. We are spirit beings. I remember hearing that years ago. You are a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul. Boy, that set me free. I had been lamenting for years over the fact that I buried my mother with no coat. She didn't have a coat on. Buried her in the in the in the the first day of December of of February in 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 Chicago, Illinois. Cold. The ground was so cold they had to get a big giant machine and beat the dirt, bam, 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 to make a hole to put the casket in. They put the big hunks of frozen dirt in a chipper. And ran it through the chipper to put it back on top of the casket. Talk about cold. I thought my mother was freezing in the ground with no coat. Huh. I found out that that was my mother's spirit. My mother had gone to be with the Lord. My mother's spirit had gone to be with the Lord. My mother's spirit had left her body and was going to be with the Lord. Oh, let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does. But let us keep wide awake, alert, and cautious. And let us be sober, self-controlled, calm, and wise. It's possible to be all those things. And you don't have to have your drink and your hit and your new sex partner, your, your new lover, your new, you know, the, the, 
The dice don't have to hit seven, you know. We can be evidence of the power of God in the earth. For those who sleep, sleep at night. That's the truth. And those who are drunk, get drunk at night. That's the truth. But since we believers, who are believers, belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love. I got confidence in God, and I walk in the spirit of love. I don't have to be in a place where uh, everybody knows me and uh, people have to do things. All I have to do is be me. And I'm going to give you some kindness and some love and some tender care if, if I don't even know your name. I don't have to have your, your credentials your pedigree, your title, your, hello. And a helmet of hope and confidence, assurance of salvation. God wants you to have your mind settled. I'm a child of God. I'm going to be just fine. God's going to take care of me. My eternity is set. I'm at peace with who I am. I'm doing my best to walk up right daily. God knows I'm not perfect, so he's not holding my mistakes against me. And see, that's what most of us do. We mess up something or we do something we don't, didn't want to do or we say something that we didn't want to say, and then we let the devil beat us about it. Let me help you. Whatever your mistake is, when you're really seeking a way to please God, whatever mistake you make, that ain't the devil's business. He's not your father. He's not your father. God is your father. And <laughs> you don't have to put up with nothing he says. You can tell him to shut his mouth. Remind him where he's going. You're going in a pit, a fiery pit, brother, and there ain't no return for you, so you need to leave me alone. Hallelujah. For God has not destined us. He has not destined us. He has not set us in a place where we are headed. Listen to this. God has not destined us to incur his wrath. He's not looking for ways to get mad with us. We're not, he's not looking for ways to mark us out, cast, cast us off and eliminate us. That's not what he's doing. He did not select us to condemn us. So I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been, what you've done. I don't care how. If you'll confess Jesus, if you'll accept Jesus as your Lord, if you call on the word of God, if you'll just receive God, if you'll pursue his word and ask him to enlighten you, he will give you not only the enlightenment you get from the word, but the enlightenment he get from a downpour and an impartation into your spirit. He will transform your thinking. He will build you up and make you feel encouraged and strengthened in him. He will come to your aid. He will rescue you. He will guide you. There will be a Holy Spirit that will uh, come uh, into your life, and you become a, a student of the Holy Ghost. He will take you from one step to another. He will counsel you. He will guide you. He will comfort you. He will do whatever needs. God's already moved in. So when you do something, say something, or have some attitude or thought that's not pleasing to God, don't let him beat you and tell you you're not worthy and God don't want you no more. Don't you let the devil do that. He's a liar. That's his name. He's the father of lies. For God did not destine you to incur the wrath of God. That is, he did not select us to condemn us, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus, who died willingly for us. Huh. He died willingly for us. He knew that it would cost his life to pay for the souls and the spirit orientations of the people that called on God. Those that would accept him, he made himself available. So no matter how many generations later, they could apply his blood to their lives and be redeemed from the curse because that's what this thing is. It's a curse. It took place. It was established in the Garden of Eden, and it has just been moving ever since. And living under the curse is not his plan. So he made available to us a way of escape. Jesus, who died for us, so that whether we are awake, alive as sheep, or dead at Christ's appearing, we will live together with him, sharing eternal life. Therefore, encourage and comfort one another 
and build one another up in your most holy faith, just as you are doing. Say something good to people. Kick, lift people up. Strengthen people. Make people feel good and good. I send out texts all the time. Hey, love you, boy. I tell you the truth. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Oh, I'm so blessed to have you. I'm so glad I passed cross. I'm so grateful to the Lord for you. I know God loves you. I know he loves you, and so do I. I mean, it doesn't hurt to do stuff for people because you don't know who's alone, who's fighting a battle, who's inside the tube getting kicked and prodded and cursed, trying to get to the other end. And your word might be just the thing. I sent a text out one time and says, I love you. And I want you to know I love you. And I'm telling you I love you because I love you. And I want you to hear me say I love you. And because I love you, you can rest assured that I love you. And by, by loving you, I know that God is pleased with me loving you. And by loving you and pleasing God, it makes me love you more. Have a good day. I guess the people that read that text said, what the heck happened to her? I'm just telling you, God loves us, and he wants us to survive. And he don't want us to survive living on the bottom. He don't want us to survive overwhelmed. Let me read this last scripture to you in the book of, let me go there, in the book of Joel. Turn real quick. We got a couple of minutes. I want to share this with you. In the book of Joel, 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 Joel. We got to go back into the Old Testament, don't we? Yes, we do. We got to go back into the Old Testament to Joel. And then when you find Joel, find Amos. When you find Joel, find Amos. Because we're going to go right to Joel. And after Joel, we're going to go to Amos. And uh, Amos and Joel right there together. But the book of Joel... Um, Oh, where's the scripture? But chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Listen to this. Alas, for the day of judgment of the Lord is at hand. Alas, here it's coming. They've been talking about Jesus coming back for a long, long time. People say, oh, I haven't heard this in my whole life. He ain't never came back. Alas, for the day for the judgment of the Lord is at hand. And it will come upon the nation as destruction from the Almighty. Hello. Turn to Amos. Turn to Amos chapter 5. Verse, oh, let's see, verse 18. Is that it? Yeah, verse 18. Amos chapter 5. Judgment is coming to you who desire the day of the Lord, expecting rescue from the Gentiles. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness and judgment and not light and rescue and prosperity. It is as if a man runs from a lion, escaping one danger, and a bear meets him, so he dies anyway. <laughs> oh, let's get on the right foot. Let's figure out what God says. And do it. Let me read that again. For it is as a man runs from a lion. Now he's running for his life. You know, we run into the stock market and to the flea market and to the racetrack, and we we running, we running, we running for our life. Escaping one danger. And a bear meets him. And so he dies anyway. I just know that the Lord loves us. I think back on all the times the Lord has shown himself merciful and kind to me. How many ways he's come to my aid. How many times he's retrieved me. How many times he's uh, excused my short thinking, my bad judgment, my my lack of wisdom, my, my re reaction to trouble. He's allowed me to develop into a place of maturity. And my desire in ministry is to help you get there. Well, you can't be offended. I got this word I've made. I guess my granddaughter said there's no such word. I think there is a word. Unoffendable. 
you can't offend me. You can't insult me. You can't make me mad with you, make me hate you. You can't do that. That's, you're not that important. First of all, the Lord explained to me once, I said, Lord, this lady was cheating me. She, he did me a certain way. The Lord said, that's not your business. I said, Lord, what do you mean it's not my business? That's my money. The Lord said, it's not your business. The Lord said, what she does is between me and her. But what you do is between me and you. And I owed that lady $75. I said, Lord, I, I couldn't work with her that $75. I had paid her almost $800. I didn't deserve to have to charge. She charged me that much. That was ridiculous. When my car broke down, I had to spend my money. I didn't want to be giving it to her. The Lord said, $75 was short of your word. You said you would pay, whether she was right or wrong. You said. And since you say you represent me and my word can't return to you void, your word can't return to me. You said you were going to pay her. And until you keep your word, I can't bless what you do and who you are the way I'd like to. Some of the things we've done, we didn't even realize. We were doing it across God, away from God, without God, against God, in opposition to God. But he is opening our eyes so that we can see clearly. God didn't deliver us and bring us out of darkness and retrieve us so that we could serve him just to condemn us. He did it so that we would develop the skill and the cultivation of who we are so that we could become Excellent vessels for his service in these last days. The day is coming, and I want you and yours to be ready. I want you and yours to be prepared. I want you and yours to come to a, a reality that without him, we are nothing. But with him, all things are possible. I praise God for the privilege of being with you. Have a great day.